The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. This is Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento. I usually do my show at noon to 1 p.m. Eastern Time called The Opening Call. I'm also the author of the, op the, uh, oh, the Tiger Technician's Hour at noon. I'm the author of The Opening Call Daily Newsletter. And uh, here we are. So let me show you a couple of things going on right now. Uh, we've got the Dow. Futures, I'm going to go straight to the futures to show in the den, YM. The futures are up 102 at 27,848. And this is extending in the futures. I have a different uh, notation. I used, let me just show you this. I use notations in the Chapman Wave methodology. And I'm always trying to identify the lowest low bar from which we can count each successively higher peak. It looks like this. This is the low bar. Um, and you count each successively higher peak alphabetizing them, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. And when you get to the fourth highest peak, alphabetized A, peak B next, peak C, peak D is the fourth, other things can happen. And when, that other, when the other things happen, it means that it could recycle higher and have a whole brand new move to the upside, or that's where you can get your strongest decline. So I look at three patterns, straight down, straight up, an arch formation and a cup formation. You can get a combination where it goes straight down, makes an arch. If it takes out that left side low, we'll see many charts in a few moments that have this pattern, takes out the left side low, um, it can go even lower. And on the right here, you've got a reverse Y formation, green, because if you take out the left side high, that's how you get those peaks. If you take that out, it looks like a Y, you take it out, you start a new leg up. And that's exactly what happens here. So let's get out of this, and I want to show you a bunch of things that I think are going to be important for today. So here we go. Go on. Okay. So we've got, in the daily, we've got this leg E. But I use different moving averages. I use a series of, of uh, tools, technical tools. I'll be teaching this in my webinar coming up Tuesday night, the 19th, 5 o'clock to 6.30. And uh, you know, Larry keeps it as simple as possible. He has his... Uh, uses Fibonacci, of course, and he uses these gardens and butterflies. Um, these things have a combination of those, but I use them in a slightly different way. But I also use the technicals, which I call the moving averages here. You see this green line, how it's holding support. See, this, that's a nine-period exponential moving average. On, the, on the, the below, this is the daily chart. Underneath it here is the black line, which is the 14-period moving average at 27,500 support. The nine is at 27,628. And what's even more important is that I also use the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, still very positive, and the stochastic, which is very strong at 95%. And I use this blue line, which is called the unbalanced volume, which is suggesting we're starting to bump into resistance. This resistance hasn't yet meant a turnaround to the downside. So far, that's strong. The weekly chart right now is strong. See, the MACD is good. Stochastic at 91% is good. And you've got a leg D in the monthly chart of the of the YM. If I look at the Dow daily right here, this is the Dow from yesterday's close. You can see that we'll be starting a leg E to the upside if we go above 27,808, which obviously looks like we're going to do at the open today. And you can see the Magnus good stochastic at 93% is good. You've got the unbalanced volume just turning down. But whatever the news was at 8.30, the market is saying, hey, that's good news. The other thing is also that the semiconductors had a mixed performance yesterday. You had NVIDIA which should have had blowout earnings, and it evidently is a little bit disappointing. But then you've also got AMAT, Applied Materials, which is up 3.80 pre-market at 60.78. So it's up um, about 6.7%, and it's, this, is, this is good action 
and that would help the semiconductors. The SMH is right now at 134.46. So I want to go through these things. Let's go through the um, the S and P. This is the cash. Cash right now is trading at 3,096.63 because it's on a on a on the basis of when the market opens. So this is pre-open, and yesterday it went to that line and it just bumped into this resistance line. I call it a trend line. And the MACD is still good, but starting to flatten out. On balance volume is very overbought, but that doesn't mean to say that it's worrying the market because at 91 percent, the stochastic is good in the daily. And the same thing in the weekly chart and the monthly. The monthly here is only in leg B. So that's very, very positive looking out, even if we do get some kind of a retracement coming fairly soon. So as I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the ESZ19, that's the December E-mini, and that ESZ19 is trading right now up $10. Now, last night, it was meandering, and then suddenly there was this pop to the upside. It ran to 31 1.50, a new all-time high. I've got this now as a leg F, and we're looking at the same thing. Where it's getting a little overbought, but actually the market itself is ignoring that fact because the price is higher. Prices are all-time highs right now. So we're going to be watching this very closely. We had some interesting action in the 120-minute chart. It should try to make a leg D above 3111.50, trading right now 3107, up 10.25 um, in the 120-minute chart. And it keeps making, I love to look at these sine waves where you go from a cup formation to an arch formation to a cup formation, started an arch, but now that arch is being tested for resistance, and so far this is a very good action. All right, a couple of things I want to look at, because I know Larry always looks at them. So let's do this. I want to just run through some of the commodities. Here's wheat. Uh, wheat right now is trading at 5.07. This is a continuous contract, down three quarters of a point. It's just stuck. Remember I spoke to you about this Arch formation is called the dreaded H in my work, lowercase h, retesting the low, the 200-period exponential moving average, and the 50-period moving averages at 503. Very strong magnet to break away from it. You really need to see 520 in about a week, in less than a week, it should get to the 520 to really say wheat is coming back again. But otherwise, the weekly chart is saying that wheat is not, not that good. And the, the monthly chart says, uh-oh, it's a real problem at this particular point. It was doing well. Now it's just stuck in a range. Soybeans, soybeans, Apple today up two and a half at 919 and a quarter. This kind of channel, I love these channels because when these channels have a very consistent between the, the boundaries, in this case, a parallel channel to the downside, when it breaks the upside, after taking a lot of time, having a very even high and low, high and low, but lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, but keep holding that, which it did two days ago perfectly, it held the support. That intimates to you that if the stochastic starts at 9%, starts to go to the teens, there could be a nice pop to the upside, and it has to break 9.29, the 200-period moving average, to say, aha, this weekly chart you can see right here, which has been making higher highs and higher lows, will continue that pattern if we can break over 9.60, uh, hopefully in, in November. If it starts to pull back and slides underneath 9.09, that's a real problem. And then corn is the same thing. We'll talk about bonds. We'll talk about um, crude oil when we get back. Basil Chapman sitting in for the one and only Larry Pesavento. Trade what you see. I am if you're not currently using the TAS profile scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, this is Basil Chapman sitting here for Larry Pesvento. I'm looking at uh, corn, this is a continuous contract. Remember, we're looking at the down channel just now in soy. So what we're looking at is there's a down channel here on the daily chart of uh, corn, but it's not acting very well. The MACD is very weak, stochastics at 16%, it's not doing all that well. And if you remember, I was just mentioning the, uh, right here, I was mentioning the dreaded H, the lowercase h pattern. If you take out the left side low, it can go much lower. That's this one right here. So let's see what we're looking at in terms of the weekly chart. Look at that. There's the H pattern. Make it simple. Close below 368 is a continuous contract. Close below 368 is a good chance you're going to go lower because you've got that H pattern. The weekly chart is very bad. This is what I call the Eiffel Tower in the monthly straight up. Look at this, straight up and straight down. Looks like an uppercase A, um, and it took out the left side low, but it did close above that left side low. Um, so this week, monthly chart is very poor. It needs to get to the 406s before I'd be able to, for, for actually 408, 406 to 408, before you can really look at this and say, wow, now we've got a real trend, change in trend to the upside. Meantime, right now, even though this is a, the same kind of channel that we saw in soy, let me just show you here. We'll do keep your eye on the left side chart. S, there we go. See, it's a little narrower and not quite as deep. Now we're going to go to the C, which is corn. See, it's a little bit wider, the movement, and that says that it has a lot of work to do to get into the 380s above the 14-period exponential moving average. The MACD is weak, stochastic is weak. It can happen because grains tend to move very suddenly, but the major trend, you need a real catalyst for having a major trend to the upside or downside. So far, the downside is a retracement, but we'll see if it's going to deepen. I want you to look at the TLT. The TLT has a nice pop to the upside, but it's pulling back a little bit. It's down 24 cents at 137.67. Uh, oh, that's because it hasn't got the candle for today. Let's go to the U.S. Let's go to the bonds, the continuous contract. Yeah, there you are. Bonds had a very strong leg A to the upside. When these strong leg A's fail and they keep coming back down to a lower low, that H pattern, um, that's really not good. Then I have to put in a Chapman wave methodology. I put it, have to put an A minus, and now we've got an A. 
I call it a gray A and actually change the color because it's so deeply underneath the previous high that there's a lot of work technically to do before I can go from a buy signal to a buy mode. We don't even have a buy signal yet. The MACD might cross positive today. Stochastics at 31%. This is a start, but what's really important is look at the left, the, the middle chart, the weekly chart. You see this H pattern? that broke underneath the 130, uh, one, oh, this is not the TLT, this is the bonds, underneath the 157s, low of 30th of September, it broke decisively, but then I've got a rule of thumb that says in this H pattern, if the left, if the right side takes out the left side, it has just two bars in which to get back inside. Once it's gone under, then you have to look at moving averages or peaks on the, on the on the chart you're looking at to see what where's the, where's the resistance because if it fails to take out this left side low and makes a successful H pattern it can go all the way back to the top of the arch when it doesn't and it's gone below it says you have to limit yourself one step at a time to say moving averages resistance that would be in the 159 and a half area this is a continuous contract a 30 year T bond uh, contract trading at 158 and 730 seconds, down half a point right now. This is going to be difficult. So, and normally what you would see is that money comes out of bonds and goes into stocks when stocks are running strongly and when stocks are starting to get very volatile and dropping, money comes back into the safety of bonds. So now what we can do is just draw a very simple trend line resistance right here in the daily chart and say, okay, Make it easy. If the uh, bonds can go to the 159.5, 160 area in the next couple of days, that'll be a good sign. That probably suggests that the market's starting to weaken. But right now, if you look at the TNX, uh, this is the 10, the TNX, this is the 10 year yield. It made a peak after the Chapman wave just recently at 19.6. 19.71 on the 7th of November and is pulling back. The MACDs turned a little bit negative and the uh, stochastic is at 66%. That's saying that yields just in the shorter term could still uh, digest gains for a little bit longer. They have had a nice bounce, um, but this monthly chart says a lot of work needs to be done before you can see the yields start to climb in the 2.1 for the 10 year. So right now, just a consolidation. Crude oil, right now we're going to crude oil. Crude oil is just in this trading range. I've been telling subscribers to my opening call daily newsletter um, that we've got uh, crude oil just kind of stuck. When I've done my show, I said this 200 period moving average, the orange line is like a magnet. It's attracting the price and it's done that for about eight or nine, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sessions. You haven't broken much above, haven't broken much below. But what's really important is that if the crude oil can actually start to trade at 58.90, uh, 59.30 in that area, starts to move away from that, the MACD should improve and the stochastic should go from 76% up to about 80%, which I like. But if it pulls back and starts to break under 55.80, this is a continuous contract, uh, it's, it's, it's a problem. Then you've got this huge resistance at the 200 period moving average in the 57s. That's crude oil. Let's do this. We want to look at high grade copper. High grade copper is pulling back off the peak E in the Chapman wave methodology. Right there, you see the MACD turned down. Stochastic's way down at 16%. It's kind of stuck in the lower range. And what I've been saying is that um, together, um, so you're looking at high grade copper. And just saying internationally, it's probably talking about some some uh, economic weakness. But one of the things I usually look at, and I'm going to do this right now, before the market opens, I want to show you a couple of things. Uh, I want to go to this particular set of charts right here. Uh, where, did I, where, where will I find it? Mirror? There it is. Okay. This is going to show you the three, I, I call this a triple yield chart. I show it to subscribers every weekend. We look at it. And it shows you that the white is the TYX, the 30-year T-bond uh, T -bond yield. The brown is the TNX, the one I just showed you, but this is the yield of the 10-year TNX. And this is the FVX, the five-year T-note, so the 10-year T-note and the five-year T-note. Look at that move off the bottom, but it's still stuck kind of in the range. Now, this is interesting. This is with the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF. I like to put them together with um, copper because it's saying internationally 
Timber Forestry is actually bouncing nicely now. It's had a huge move to the downside from the all-time highs, which is up at 83.88 back in June of uh, last year. I, I can't remember if it's all-time high, but the most recent major high. And you've got Philadelphia Housing Index. This is the le this chart right here. Got stuck in this rectangle formation up and down, stuck in that range. And now what we've got is we've got how great uh, we've got the Philadelphia Housing Index. Uh, rallying nicely, but it hasn't taken out that peak D. Remember how important D is? Look, D was the high that was made right there. That was back in May of 2019 at 316.55. Pulls back sharply, then starts a brand new move, goes to another peak D in the 360 area. So that's going to be very important. That's at 356.41 today. So if yields remain low, maybe um, the, the Philadelphia Housing Index goes higher. Had a question about gold. We'll go to gold. I just want to show something that I thought was quite interesting. Gold is stuck in the range. And the question is, can we look at Nugget and GDX? When we get back, the market will have opened, and we certainly will look at that. Let's see what the day has in store for us. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Pesavento. I'm the host of the, uh, uh, the Tiger Techn Technicians Hour at noon to 1 p.m. and author of the opening call, Daily Newsletter. So let's just go through the markets now open. I will get to, uh, I had a question about gold. We'll get to gold in a moment. Let's just do the NQs at, at 83.15, up 49. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a yet a second, what I call a Chapman Wave instant restart at peak D. 
Uh, that would be really unusual to have a third sequence going up, but at least it's going up for now. It's up 50, and that is very really good action. I want to show you the QQQ, which is the NDX 100 trading vehicle. That's going to a leg F right there, big gap to the upside. Um, the MACD is good. Stochastic is very good at 92%. The unbalanced volume is not really confirming this yet. So let's see what happens. Uh, so now we're at 202.68 uh, as a high. Um, that's a very good action. Let, let's just have a look at AMAT, which is Applied Materials. Wow, what a nice move. Up 4.88 uh, and soaring right now, 61.73. Uh, this is now a leg. Oh, this is a leg D. Leg D, there we are, another D. We're looking at Ds, very, very important. And in the uh, weekly chart, I'm not sure if they recycled that, but it's a leg F. The monthly chart is 62.40 was the all, was the, is that an all-time high? Let me have a look at this. Yeah, all-time high, 62.40. Uh, back in March of 2018, and so far the high today is 61.89. I'll probably tag it, and that's the leg C. You see this cup formation? You see this dashed line here, and it says by uh, that's by January of 2020 it should retest the 62.40 area. This is now three months earlier, and you see this dashed line here. It's called Chapman Wave Inside Track. Uh, so inside wedge, repellent target line, it's just gone above that. So it's going to be very interesting how we close on the day today. So um, I wanted to show you that the SMH is uh, trading right now, gapped up. So this is what we call the neck in the, this particular oval pattern. So now I'm going to change the color on the inside. There you are. So now it looks like a pattern that we often look at. Let's see how this breaks out. Is it 135.15? Uh, the high so far is 135.22. I was expecting that we'd have a stronger resistance and that we would pull back from here. Nope, we've just gapped up on that news. So that's going to be something that we have to monitor very, very closely. And I just need to look at something here. So I'm talking apples to apples. Uh, okay. So we were short, now we're out. We had a short position, just a, nothing fancy, just a short position, of maybe a one and a half percent, I think it is. Uh, two points, one and a half. Uh, yeah, so uh, less than two points. So what we are looking at here is within the semiconductor index, um, what happens after this? You've got in the pattern I'm looking at to continue higher. It needs to go to the 135.50, then 136.10 level by about Monday or Tuesday. If there's a pullback and it goes under 134, it could say this was a gap up conclusion to a particular phase. We'll be watching that very closely. But so far, hey, this is, you can't complain. This is really good action. Let's go to the, um, so that's the SMHs. Oh, I wanted to talk about a gold. So when we're looking at the gold contract, <sighs> You see, this is very, I've got a rectangle formation, but basically it looks like the arch. This is the dreaded H pattern, because it took out, it, it was in a, there you are. It made this kind of pattern that has a bounce off the low after making it high, and then it takes out the left side low loss. We could close underneath, right now, underneath what? Underneath the, this is a continuous contract, underneath the low of one, 465.0. 1465. We're at 1465.9 right now. We're a tad above it. But last week, we went under it and then closed at 1462.9. So this is going to be very important for me because is gold about to have a strong bounce back into what we call the rectangle formation, uh, which goes all the way back. I, I love to look at these visually. I'm, I'm a visual, I was a visual artist once upon a time. So I like to think, look at things visually. If you're looking at this as a fulcrum, this rectangle uh, formation right here, between 1480, let's call it 1485 and 1546. No, 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 sorry, 1520. You see the price, even though it went above, it kept coming back. Even though it went below, it kept coming back. Now it's gone below and it's struggling to get back into that 1485 area. So I'm going to be watching this closely because if gold is struggling right here, it says internationally there's a kind of a benign attitude towards the conflagrations, verbal conflagrations going on all around the world, and that is quite, quite important. And not only that, it says 
that if silver is also fading and actually looks a lot worse now, usually silver has a slightly better chart pattern and then follows gold, but it, it doesn't break out like gold has broken out, except that once when it went to 1975 back in uh, September of this year and the week of the 5th of September. But there's the H pattern you can see, and it's gone under and it's struggling to get about. And the MACD is negative, and the weekly charts, the CASIC negative. And it just says to me, gold is not in play right now for the upside. I could be wrong, but I'm just saying to you that's the way it looks at this particular time, and I'm going to be following it very closely because, um, in terms of the leading indicators, if the metals start to really move higher, I have to look around, I have to see what's happened to the dollar. Well, the dollar has held very nicely up until now in the big consolidation from 1962, the most recent um, five-year high. Uh, 103.82 was, uh, no, so what did I say, five-year high? That was, sorry, uh, in 19, January 19 of 2017, 103.82 was the high, and it slumps down <clears throat> to the February 2018 low of um, 88.25. And then it rallies. Uh, we did for subscribers. We've been long since 90.07 via the UUP fund, and still hold it. Took just a tiny little bit off somewhere in the uh, 96 area, uh, but we're holding it because I think that this is really an icon. Uh, the way I'm looking at uh, the dollar is that it's an icon. It represents. I call it the Harley Davidson, not the, the, the company, but the old icon of the Harley Davidson as an America's motorbike. Um, and a rock and roll, Harley Davidson, you know, that whole thing from the 50s. But um, it represents an icon of the, the economic growth and the superiority of the econ American economy at this particular time. So I'm still, I'm, I like the dollar. It has consolidated. There's your peak D. Remember, I said that fourth highest peak is where you've got to be careful. 99.67 on the 1st of October. Peak D plummets down to 97 point. It doesn't plummet. It drops sharply to 97.14. Makes the dreaded H. Goes under it to 97.11. Successful MACD and stochastic turn to the upside. Rallies to a peak C. I would have preferred if that was just a peak B. Peak C means you're close to a D and you're way under the previous, uh, I call it the uh, Grand Canyon. Uh, Cliffs, look, you've got this sharp move to the downside. So this is not a successful buy signal to buy mode yet. It should be, but um, I would have preferred to see 98.80 to 99.10 at this point. So uh, the dollar is just consolidating huge gains, and it's done that for a while. EUR, USD, look at this, the euro a dollar currency pair. You've made your, your trough scene. You're trying to rally. You're at the nine period moving average. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Trapp is sitting in for Larry Pizzavento. Trade what you see. I'll be back and we'll be discussing the currencies and then we're going to go to some important... If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
Baum publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. So talking about uh, different waveforms and the Chapman Wave methodology, we've gone to a two-minute chart peak E at 3111, 3, 1, 1. 1.50. That's like a, um, and, and the last, that was the high from earlier this morning. And the two minute chart just went to 311.25 for a, a kind of a double top. And now we're trading at 3106. That's a peak E. The five minute chart peak E pull back into a sell mode right now. Both the two minute chart and the five minute chart are in sell mode. The, the 10 minute chart, I use what I call a phantom peak and has gone to a D. That's pull back. And now we're going to see, because the MACD hasn't crossed negative yet, but the price has gone underneath two key moving averages, so we're going to be watching this. Now, for me, it's really important. I'll just lay it on the line because, uh, I mean, if you don't if you don't look at markets and try to trade your, your methodology as consistently as possible, then you're looking at some kind of a problem in terms of um, – reformulating your methodology. You don't want to price fit or form fit. You want to just do what you do. So um, let me just show you this a pattern that I call the drop bucket, drop bucket pattern. It's a cup formation that goes to a D, E, or F, and then it tries, it pulls back, having a long move to the upside, pulls back just modestly, then tries to rally, make the cup formation. If that right side fails to take out the left side, you remember the inverted Y formation? Let me just show you right here. That's this pattern right here. Whoops, that's the wrong thing. Uh, didn't mean that. I meant this. That's this pattern right here, the, the reverse Y. If the if if it fails to take out the high, or if it just takes out the high, but on, on the downside, I've got the MACD, the moving average convergence, divergence, the stochastic failing. That says, be careful. You've got no energy to the upside. There's no confirmation. Well, look what happened here in the euro. It makes a high back around the 14th or so. Uh, sorry, 21st at 1.117, pulls back. That's peak D. Under the 200 period moving average, it pulls back to the 14 period moving average, the black line, 1.107. And wait a minute, it rallies all the way to a little mini double top between 1.1175 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1.1.75 1, 1. again. And then look at the MACD. The MACD suddenly turns down. Stochastic never confirmed that rally at all. And then it plummets down and goes to a low yesterday of this is the euro dollar currency pair. And it goes down to 1.0989. Now it's trying to rally. It stopped at the pink line, the, the nine-period nine exponential moving average. Or when it crosses the black line, changes color to pink. On the way up, it goes green. And the next level of resistance is 1.105. And yet, you've got the H pattern. The one was unsuccessful with the doji candle on the weekly there, A minus. Plummets down, takes out the left side low, starts all over again. There's another A. Is this going to hold or not? Well, the monthly chart is saying, wow, the MACD's not good. 
and the stochastic is flat at 10 percent it's going to be price in the daily and weekly that really help the monthly until it gets to 1.123 um this monthly chart is going to look poor and if you look at the usd jpy this is the uh, yen dollar yen currency pair it made a peak e with a down arrow with a doji top and it's trading at 108.74 up 0.33 right now and ugly candle yesterday is trying to recover but look at this the, look at the power of this 200 period moving average how it acted as a fulcrum up and down it keeps coming back to the 108.76 area because that's the fulcrum line until it breaks out decisively into the 109.70s on the upside or below 108 10 on the downside let's just say this h pattern right here the low 107.89 if it takes that out downside that's not going to be good so now i want to so that says this 200 period moving average of the weekly chart is like a magnet to 109.49 it starts leg d if it can go over 109.488 and the monthly chart says, hey, it's just stuck in a range. US dollar, Japanese yen, just stuck in a range. I had a question about the gold. So I just wanted to say, in terms of the gold, um, if you are long, but you've been long from two days ago, I would just say, be careful, put a stop. Is it 14.65? Use that as your benchmark, because if it starts to close at 14.58, it says, you know, there isn't any strength. It's going to be pulling back quite a bit. If for any reason, uh, Sunday night, Monday, there's some news over the weekend, and bam, you're looking at 14.78, 14.82. That's the action you want to see if you're long nugget, if you're long um, the gold, if you're long the GDX, GDX trading right now. Uh, not a bad candle, a little green candle, but you can see the 14 period moving average, the black nine resistance uh, is stuck, it's down nine cents at 26.91. I just think it's stuck in a range. Look at this, the weekly chart, lower lows and lower highs, nothing to see yet. They will be later on, because I think you will go to a leg D above 30.96. I'm not sure it's going to be just right in this time frame. Now, I need to talk about a couple of things that are really important based on what I'm looking at. Um, as I say, I... I have no problems talking about what I do right and what I do wrong. If you don't talk about what you do wrong, it means that not, not only are you in denial, but there's no learning experience. You want a learning experience. If you make a mistake, you have to say, hey, that was a mistake. And as a result, um, what did I learn? So what, we, what I wanted to mention here is that we are, uh, for my subscribers to my opening call, we have some really nice long positions. They're doing very well. But at the same time, we did go short the SMHs um, uh, at, let me, I'll just tell you exactly what it is, so I'll give you the facts as they are written. Started a short at 132.38, uh, 135.08 buy stop. I wanted the, the buy stop to be kind of tight, um, less than 2%, because I, when I've got it right on the semiconductors, I've got it exactly right. When I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I, I, I don't want to fight the tape. And this is what I mean by fighting the tape. In the SMHs, I'm going to switch a little bit, if you don't mind, because I'm demonstrating here. This gap to the upside and holding it had 135.26 as the high, just 20 cents above the stop that I had. I don't... If I'm wrong, it says that this MACD, instead of turning down, which it would have done very decisively today, if there was weakness, instead of being up 2.01 and 134.95, the semiconductor index, SMH, if it was even 132.70, right on the nine period, the green nine period moving average, that would have suggested that that MACD started to turn down for the very first time since it broke to the upside back in mid-October, where the, where the SMHs went from 120, bam, right to 121, and then just never looked back and kept going higher. So that was my thinking. Um, the weekly chart is still very strong. Monthly charts are like C, very strong. So this would have been a pullback that would have suggested that there could be a pullback towards the 129, 127 area. Now that it's gone this high, I have to do work over the weekend, which I sent to my, my subscribers for the opening call, and, and show them that there was, um, there's a pattern that I call the Chapman Wave Stalk Leg Formation, and that's this oval pattern. And when you break to the upside after a long move, that's, this is the leg, this is the body, this is starting the neck, and then the beak usually comes back and goes into the body. If it goes into the body and then rebounds, that can be very powerful. But if it goes into the body and then takes out the left side low, and the left side low is this 
right here in the oval pattern. It's this low right here, 130.97. It can go a lot lower. Or if it didn't break out to the upside, it would have been this arch formation that says, uh-oh, starting to show weakness, but that would only happen if you've got technicals pulling back. And they're not right now. They're holding, they almost did, but they're holding well the stochastics at 88%. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions Hour. I'll be right back. And we'll talk about a webinar coming up on Tuesday the 19th at 5 o'clock. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So, folks, uh, if you're interested in this, these charts and the formations, look at this U-shaped formation. The natural gas made a slightly higher high, and now it's pulling back, making a cup and handle formation. But uh, the technicals are actually quite weak in the in the daily and the weekly one is it needs to hold uh, the two point I would put it right here two point five eight area. Um, so these are the patterns that we're looking at all the time. In my show coming up at noon, uh, a couple of hours from here, you will see these charts in my Tiger Technicians Hour. I'll do that and I'll demonstrate a lot of it. This is what I'm be talking about. Very simple techniques you can use. You can add to whatever it is that you're doing so that um, it just gives you a kind of look at this black line. Look how nicely it gives you the support level. Look at that resistance. That's the 14 period moving average. Look at that uh, 14 period moving average support there. And the nine period moving average is giving you the kind of springboard that says right here is your, your initial start, but that it's a real serious cushion is 
is over here. Uh, I mentioned the yen, the Russell is weak. This is an important day. So what I wanted to say is that the Dow, how we close today and how we start off next week is going to be really important. I would have suspected if all this good news is going on, we should be more than 86 points up in the Dow. We are still short. We've got a short position. And um, in the Dow, about 180 points lower. We'll see what happens. Uh, haven't got close yet to the stop. Well, fairly close, but not close enough. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, starting to run out of energy. Uh, let's see how you go for the next couple of days. But I'm not going to fight the tape. If I'm wrong, very quickly, we'll have to switch positions and look at the upside. We've had some really nice stocks. I'll show you this using this methodology of the cup formation. Because a Chapman Wave cup and ladle that should go to a D. What do we do? We go to a D. This is BDSI. But I'd also shown this chart to subscribers. I said this thing made a high of 18.48 in September by delivery sciences of 2014. Come down to 150. But look at this beautiful cup formation. It's got a left side, right side price time match to November. Let's, let's buy it and see what we can do. So we bought it at the 517 area in October the 23rd, hit a peak D at 645, right there at the resistance of 640 that we had looked at. These are the formations that we look at all the time. Do they work all the time? No, not everything does. This one did. So tune into my show at noon. And remember, I've got a webinar coming up Tuesday the 19th. Check the front page of TFNN. And have a great day. Have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for Tom and Tommy coming up. And then it's uh, Think or Swim. And then I'm on at noon. Then Steve Rhodes, Dave White, and then Tom O'Brien. Have a great day. Have